Lord, it's a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are saved. So, Father, we come tonight with hearts of thanksgiving. We come tonight with hearts of praise. We come tonight with hearts of thanksgiving tonight. And we bless you and we thank you for this night, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this last Saturday of October, Lord. We thank you how you brought us from January to October, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father, through trials and tribulations and ups and downs, ins and outs, but we thank you, Lord, that through it all you've been faithful. And we thank you, Lord, that we serve a faithful God tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness to us tonight, for your faithfulness to each and every one of us that is here tonight, God. And we say, Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place. We invite your presence. We invite your move. We invite what you want to say, what you want to do tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we just release a fresh flow of your presence, a fresh flow of your spirit tonight, oh God, in Jesus' name. We bless you, we honor you, we glorify you, we magnify your name tonight. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for us tonight. We thank you for this gift in the body of Christ. And Lord, we just say, Lord, use him tonight for your glory, God. Have your way tonight, Father God. And we just bless you, we thank you, Lord, for all that you are tonight. Bless everyone that's watching tonight. Let no one leave the same tonight, in Jesus' name. Let's just lift up our hands as we reverence the Lord tonight, as we lift up our hands prophetically to receive all that God wants to do in this place tonight, all that God may want to do for you where you are watching tonight in Jesus' name. And Lord, we cast all of our cares upon you tonight because you are the Lord that cares for us. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. Have your way tonight, God. Have your way tonight. Wonderful are you, Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Even when things haven't gone too good, we can always say, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord. We bless you tonight, Lord. So, Father, as we honor you tonight, we worship you tonight. We just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, Lord. In Jesus' name. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. God is good. Amen. So at this time, we want to uh, bring up my brother. We, we just thank and praise God for Russ that's here tonight, one of my brothers in the Lord. And I'm just going to let him come and just share tonight. Let's just be open to whatever God wants to say and whatever God wants to do. Amen. Amen. So I think he may, if you're going to go up here and lead a song or he wants to, go, all right, let it, well, let's give him some love as he comes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Since I've used this keyboard, <laughs> yeah. so, like, so if I gotta figure out what I'm doing here. Like, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, it's, it used to be so simple, bro. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Just trying to find the piano. <laughs> this is so bizarre. Oh my goodness, they have all these fancy things here. I may not be able to do this. I can't find a piano. <laughs> a piano sound. Yeah. On the side. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
it's on. Yeah, he's going through the. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. That's the problem. But I can't seem to find the. especially over these past couple of years. And, um, so I just want to share, you know, and feel free to sing along. It's, uh, it's a song that Carrie Joe recorded. Tell I used to be a sound guy. <laughs>
Well, Mark, I, I want to thank you. I, I really did not. Make sure you're on low. Yeah, that's. No, it's not. Oh, the red light is on. Oh, it's got to be green. Well, that's not green. <laughs> All right. Green means go. Yes. <laughs> but thank you. It was, uh, I guess it was a God thing, right? That we happened yeah. to bump into each other in the bank. Praise the Lord. So I'm glad to be here. It's, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to share Amen. with you all tonight. So uh, did you all enjoy the last hurrah of summer today? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that was just unexpected. I mean, the whole week, right? I mean, I, I've been taking some advantage of a little extra S-U-N time. Yes. As well as S-O-N. Amen. You know, Amen. Get out in the Amen. sun and enjoy it. So um, I'm not going to take too much time. I, I want to share just a few thoughts with you tonight about my journey over the past couple of years. Um, some of you may know, some of you may not. Um, a little over two years ago, August of 2021, uh, my wife and I lost our daughter to cancer. And it was a devastating blow, as you might imagine. No parent wants to see their child go to glory before them, right? That's the only good thing about it, I guess, is that she is with Jesus and, and we'll see her again. So for me, it was extremely difficult because, you know, I, I've been in, I've been walking with the Lord for 50 years, okay? Yeah, I'm old. Right? <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I have walked through many different streams, many different things that the Lord has taught me over the years. I know how to pray, I know how to declare, I know how to believe for prayer, or rather believe for healing, and all of that, right? And so that's what we did. We did everything we knew to do. 
to see that she got healed. Well, guess what? It didn't happen. And when you, when you experience something of that magnitude in your life, it shakes you pretty good. It shakes you pretty good. And so I would say, you know, for the next two months or so after that, you know, I was just, <laughs> I was at a place where it's like, well, why do I bother to go on? Why do I bother? You know, it seems like everything that I knew wasn't right. Or I, I didn't know what I, you know what I'm saying? You, you yeah, just get, yeah. you get to a point where it's like, <laughs> what do I do now? Right. And so. You know, you 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 struggle, you just you get you're mad at God, you're mad at everything. And so for at least a couple of months, you know, I'm like, man, I'm forget this stuff. I'm just I'm out. Right? You ever said that? Yes. You ever said I'm out? Well, I said that to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm out. You failed us. You, it's, what's going on here? This is wrong, right? And so, like I said, for about two months or so, it was like that. And then all of a sudden, around two years ago, around October, two years ago, I realized that as much as I was upset and, and disappointed and angry, I could not shake who I really was. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I couldn't Amen. walk away right. from my identity. Amen. And to try to do that would would be the, the, to me, the utmost in hypocrisy for me to try to live a life, uh -huh. you know, that didn't, it wasn't uh, uh, in line with who I really, who I knew I really was, okay? And so, I kind of slowly said to the Lord, all right, clearly, there's something missing, clearly, I haven't known things as I ought to have known. What's what's wrong with this picture, right? And and that that place of utter brokenness before God, utter utter surrender to Him, and say, "Okay, God, clearly, clearly, there's just something missing here in my life." Okay, having seen many people healed over the years, right? Having seen major things happen, to now all of a sudden realize that, you know, when it was most important, I failed my daughter as a father. I couldn't protect her. I couldn't, I couldn't, right? I couldn't get her out of that, right? So what I ended up having to do at that point in my life was to say to the Lord, all this stuff, you know, that I've been doing, that I have done, everything that you've given me, this ministry, this whatever, right? You name it. I'm just, I'm laying it down at your feet. I'm just going to lay it down, Lord. I can't function in any way. You know, the, 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 the day after my, my daughter died, I, I went off social media. I've been doing a uh, a weekday morning broadcast called Breakfast with Jesus for years. Some of you may have seen it. You know, I stopped everything. I just laid it down. I said, Lord, I, I can't do anything right now. And the journey that he brought me on from that point, <laughs> I'm at a point now where, where my intimacy with him goes so far beyond anything that I ever experienced in my life prior, okay? And, and I said to him, I said, Lord, why did it take a devastation in my life for me to finally step back and say, what's missing? Because if we're all honest, right? We, every day we go forth and we do the things that we have been taught to do what we know to right. do. We do, we do, we do, we do. Right. And that was my life. You know, I was I was a Christian type A for a number of years. You know what type A personality is that they talk about in the business world? 
It's like everything is a goal. Everything is, you know, go, 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 do, 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 all of that. And I, I, you know, I knew what it was to be intimate with the Lord. I had times of intimacy with him. I had times where it was like, whoa, you know, you get totally slain in the spirit and, and everything is amazing. But those times were few and far between. Isn't that true? Yeah. For most of us, it's right. few and far between. Yep. So I knew there was something wrong. And, and what the Lord told me was this. He said, son, you've left the place that I said to my disciples that every single one of my children needs to stay in. And this is in Matthew chapter 8, I'm sorry, chapter 16. And, um, you know, Jesus' disciples were real guys, you know, they, they weren't saints, they weren't, you know, they had their flaws and weaknesses, right? Yep. Yes. Yep. And, and so, you know, Jesus sends them out on these missionary journeys and they're out there, you know, healing the sick and, and, and raising the dead and casting out demons, right? And so, so when they come back, naturally they start, you know, I think I, think I got the greatest anointing, I got the greatest gift, I'm the man, right? And so it's it, it, verse one here of chapter 16. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, well, who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a child to himself and set him before them and said, truly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Now, folks, I have to tell you, I have taught on this passage. This was not unknown to me, right? I've taught this in, in my workshops and seminars and classes and all of that. I've taught it. But I guess... I never really entered into it and lived it as if my life depended on it. Well, guess what? At that point, my life literally depended on God. If you don't show me what to do, I'm lost. I, 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 can't, I can't go on, right? And that's what Jesus is saying. Think about the good qualities of a child that Jesus is referencing here. What, what are they? Give me, give me some feedback. What, what are the good qualities of children that Jesus is holding up? Here? Innocent. They're innocent. Innocent. They, right? They're trusting. Mm -hmm. Pure. Pure motive. Pure. Yeah. Loving. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Forgiving. So, hmm? Forgiving. Forgiving. Yeah. Right. And so Jesus is saying that the starting Place for me and for all of us is this childlike posture before him. Now, again, I've taught this and I've also taught about what it is to be a mature son or daughter because that's also in play. Let's see. We never outgrow our need to be a child before him. That's true. That's true. And why is that? Because we don't know what we don't know. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I don't know. Why don't you say that with me? I don't know what I don't know. And, and we have to hold to that. Right? Come on, think about it. You walk with the Lord for a certain number of years. You, 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 you learn things, right? You know what to do. You know, you know what you shouldn't do, right? And all of a sudden, it's like, I got this. I got this. Maybe I don't. That's right. And how would I know? How would I know? Unless I come before him. Oh, I'm your much loved child, Papa. I'm your boy. Right? And I don't know 
what I need to know right now. See, that's the thing. There, there is this, uh, I guess it's, it's, it's a fine line, it's a, it's a paradox, it's all these different things where I come as that much-loved child before him. And he says, yeah, here's what I want you to learn. Here's what I want to teach you, right? And I'm going, oh, great, oh, this is awesome. And then he teaches me something, and he says, now, when this thing comes up, you know what to do. See? Because that's the level of maturity. When, when you were growing up, let's just put it in real terms here, right? You were growing up, you were a toddler, you, then you got older and whatnot. When you reached a certain age, did you have to go to your parents and say, hey, how do I brush my teeth? How do I take a shower? No, why? Because you learned it and you did it. And when you bumped up against something you didn't know, hey, I'm not sure what is this. See? And, and so being that child in his presence is a posture that I, I will never walk away from. I'm never walking away. I'm gonna, I am so glad to be a child in his house. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, Amen. where, where I, I get to, I get to have that intimacy with him, where he can talk to me, where I can talk to him, right? And this is something now; it's every day. It's not just that once in a while we kind of check in. Oh, Lord, I need you. You know, I want to have that intimacy of a child father relationship for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so. In this journey that he took me on, he he led me through a, a whole series of things that I needed to do, some of which was dealing with generational stuff that I had no clue was even there, right? And I went through all of that, I mean, oh, just so much. But one of the most impactful and transformative things that I was taught has to do with what about all this pain and emotional baggage, the trauma that I endured, and, and you know, all of that, right? We know what that's like. I, I don't think anybody here is free, totally free from emotional baggage and trauma, right? Because we've all been through stuff. That's right. And it stays there as much as we may want to get free from it, right? Amen. Well, let me see. I want to see if I can get there. I got this. I got this app. I, I, I'm old school. I just like the Bible. We printed Bible. You know. <laughs> it's like. So, but let me let me see if I can if I can grab this quick enough here, because I want to read this passage um, to you. Oh, oh, there we go. It's right here somewhere. Heck, do you want me to download it? Okay. No, I'm not going to. So Isaiah 53 is the major prophecy of the Messiah, right? Where it talks about all that, that the Messiah was going to do. In verse, uh, verse, what is that, verse 6? I can't even tell, verse 4. <laughs> Such a fine print. In verse 4, it says, surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yes. Wow. Now, because I, I have studied healing and practiced healing, divine healing for years and years and years, right? I knew that that could be also translated sicknesses and disease. And that's what Matthew does. And his, his rendering of this chapter, of this verse in Matthew 8, Right? He translates it as sickness and disease and all of that. So I never really looked at this from a, an emotional standpoint. Right? Until a friend of mine who published his wonderful little booklet called Emotional Healing in Three Steps, which you want to get a copy of, okay, brings out that the Lord spoke to him and the Lord said, Son, I actually did bear your griefs. And carried away your sorrows. That's good. I actually did that. Okay. So 
using this and other things that God taught me, he has fully healed and restored my soul yes, from all the junk that I went through all those years. I, and especially, you know, like I said, over two years ago with my daughter. Now, you got to understand also, I lost a spiritual daughter about a year later to the same thing. So I was getting beat up left and right when it was Can you understand why I hate cancer? Yes. I hate it. And I will, I will dedicate the rest of my life to canceling that sickness. Yes. Hallelujah. I look at cancer as our modern day leprosy. Yes. Right? How that affected people back then and, and it was incurable and all of this, right? Well, people look at cancer as, as if it's incurable. Well, it's not. It is absolutely curable. In Jesus' name. You know, and, and I want to become a cancer free zone for people. Right? Oh. But but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. I wanna I wanna just finish with this. I want you to think about some incident in your life that was extremely painful for you emotionally or was traumatic for you emotionally. You don't need to get into all the details. Just remember the event, right? And I want you to do this. Jesus, say this with me. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you to take from me now. I ask you to take from me now these emotions. Now you can tell him what they are. You don't have to speak it out loud. Just tell him what they what those emotions are, right? Take these emotions, Jesus, right? Next, Jesus, I ask you to heal the wounds in my soul. Lord, I receive your healing. Thank you for healing me. Now, think of, again about that incident. What emotions are still there? For many of you, you don't have to be able to think of anything. There's no emotion. Because Jesus is still If there is, if there's still an emotion, whatever it is, Jesus asks you to take this emotion, yes. heal the wound in my soul. I receive your healing. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Okay? Folks, I have done that almost every day for the past two years. Okay? Anytime something came up that was like, oh, Jesus, I give you this. Take this emotion, heal the wound in my soul. Thank you, I received your healing. Yes, Lord. Okay? Isn't that amazing? Amen. Yeah, and listen, I've also been involved in inner healing ministry for years. And I know what it's like working with people and having helping them to walk through trauma and other things like that. Oh my gosh, I wish I'd known this. This is the fastest and most effective way to get inner healing that I have ever, ever run across. And now you know how to do it. Amen. So now, when you're with somebody that's really struggling, having a hard time, that you're going through some emotional traumas or whatever, what are you going to do? Jesus, take these emotions. Yes, Lord. Please heal the wound in my soul. I receive your healing, Lord. Thank you. Could there be anything more simple? Did you get touched? Amen. Did you get touched? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's got so much more for us if we'll just simply become childlike again and say, Papa, would you teach me? Would you teach me what you had in mind for our relationship from the beginning that I never really saw before? Right? And instead of us running around doing all these things that we think we need to do in order to please him, all he's ever said and this is this just wrecked me. All he has ever said is, My child, I just want you. I just want you. That is it. You want to have an interesting conversation with him sometime? Go back and read the story of Adam and Eve in the garden and ask him to show you what he had in mind for the human race that God stole. The Garden of Eden is absolutely the prototype of what life was supposed to look like. 
perform the fall. Right. right? And it, what it should look like, it should have, you know, right? Yeah. And guess what? Jesus' blood was enough to restore us back to Eden with the Father. Go explore that and have some fun with that, all right? Thank you so much. It's been great to share. Praise God. Praise God. Let's give God praise, amen. So good. Well, we thank you all for tuning in tonight on our Facebook Live, and we pray that you would just be blessed. So, Father, we just pray, Lord, that everyone that's watching tonight, that they would just receive from you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the words that have been released, Father, and we just thank you for healing us tonight, for taking all of our, our baggage, our trauma, our drama, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you that you carried it away, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you were wounded for our transgressions, that you were bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord, and by your stripes we are healed. So we bless you and we honor you this night in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, everybody. Lord, I'm going to see you tomorrow morning at 7.55 a.m. Amen. Let's give God a praise. Amen.